The last approach that I want to talk about is known as a crosstab. So what a crosstab does is it allows us to examine the associations between two or more variables. So for instance, is there a relationship between variable x and variable y? But most critically what it does is it allows us to do this for variables that are only nominally scaled, meaning variables that are things like gender, male, female, and its relationship to another variable like choice of stores, online versus brick and mortar. Up to now, we've had no tools that allow us to test the relationship between those two variables, but crosstabs does let us do that. So the best way to do this is to show you in SPSS how this works, and then we'll discuss what's going on under the hood. We're gonna use a different data set. This time it's the satisfaction data set. And this is a data set of customer satisfaction survey that was administered to customers at a certain Colorado ski resort. Information was collected on satisfaction, customer demographics, and customer types, particularly the type of sport they engage in. The final sample had about 500 people, and the objective was to learn whether certain segments were satisfied or dissatisfied with their experience. So the data we have are satisfaction, which is coded as one is satisfied, zero is dissatisfied, gender, age, income, usage frequency, and the user type, skier, snowboarder, or cross-country skier. And what we might want to know is if two variables like gender and satisfaction are associated with one another. And what I mean by that is, is it the case, for instance, that men are satisfied, but women are dissatisfied? That's one hypothesis. So we might want to test that. And we're going to do something very similar in SPSS. So here we have our data set, and we want to actually go ahead and test this relationship between satisfaction and gender. And the way we do that is we go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Crosstabs. And in one of these, we put gender, and in the other, we put satisfaction. Which one we put them in it doesn't actually matter as long as they're in different ones. Under statistics, we need to ask for the chi-square test. What this is going to do is it's going to test to see if that relationship exists. So we do that, we hit OK, and we find our output. So there's two things that are relevant to this output. This table here, which tells us the number of individuals that fall into each of these categories. So there were 124 dissatisfied men. There were 111 satisfied female, and so on. And also what we wanna look at is this test right here, the Pearson chi-square test. That's our test that tells us, is it the case that, for instance, satisfaction differs as a function of gender? And here we see that the p-value is 0 0.083, which we say is above 0.05, and so we cannot reject the null, which is that these two have no association. In other words, men are just as satisfied as women. So let's take a look and see if satisfaction and user type are in fact related. We again go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs. In one of the buckets we put satisfaction, and the other one we put user type. And again, we're going to ask for the chi-square test. And what we see is that, in fact, there is an association because our Pearson chi-square value is, in fact, below 0.05. This tells us that satisfaction differs as a function of user type. But what it doesn't tell us is how that difference exists. In order to understand that, we need a little bit more information. So we're going to go back to our window for cross tabs. And in addition to all the things we've already asked for, we're gonna ask for a few more bits of information under the cells box. Specifically, we're going to ask for the row and column percentages, as well as the standardized residuals. And I'll explain what all those are in just a second. So we hit continue, we hit okay. We get the same result, but we get a much more complex table. So let's take a look and see what we find. What this table does is instead of giving us just the raw values, which we get in the counts over here, we get the percentages within both the row and the column values. So for instance, what this number tells us is that of those who are dissatisfied, this row, 43% are skiers, 41% are snowboarders, and 14% are cross-country skiers. Of those who are satisfied, 77% are skiers, 15% are snowboarders, and 7% are cross-country skiers. A slightly more intuitive way to look at it is in the other direction. We say that skiers were roughly 78% satisfied and 22% dissatisfied. Snowboarders were roughly 43% satisfied and 57% dissatisfied. And cross-country skiers were roughly 49% satisfied and 51% dissatisfied. Now we have a much better picture. It kind of looks like the skiers are generally very happy. 
but the snowboarders and cross-country skiers, not so much. And not only can we make this judgment subjectively, but if we look at these standardized residuals, we can make it statistically. What we have is a rule that says that if the absolute value of the standardized residual is two or greater, we can conclude with 95% confidence that that value deviates from what we would have expected if there were no association. Meaning, if we knew nothing about, for instance, user type, we would observe that two-thirds, 66% of the users were satisfied, and a third were dissatisfied. So in other words, overall, two-thirds of people are satisfied, and a third are dissatisfied. But that's not what we observe here. We see that far fewer people are dissatisfied, only 22%, and far more are satisfied, 78%. And because both of the absolute values of these are greater than 2, so 3.6 and 2.5, we can conclude that skiers are disproportionately more satisfied than we would have expected if we didn't know anything about their user type. The same can be said for snowboarders. Snowboarders are significantly more dissatisfied, less satisfied, and that's mostly the case for cross-country skiers. The reason we can't say that with absolute certainty is actually because our sample size is starting to get a little small. We only have 23 and 24 people here. But again, what this is doing is it's saying, compared to the general pattern, where two thirds are satisfied and a third are satisfied, are the different user types differentially satisfied? So cross tabs are a wonderful tool for looking at the association between two categorical variables. Now, one thing just to be a little bit careful about is if you have small cell sizes, meaning if when you run your crosstab, one of those boxes has too few observations, some of the conclusions about statistical significance might be a little bit questionable. And so the rule of thumb we use is that if you have fewer than five observations in 20% or more of your cells, any of those boxes, you have a problem and you really should be approaching this in a slightly different way. But critically, crosstabs really are the best approach we have for comparing categorical variables to one another.